Myth number three. Outside of ancient Egypt, Africa has a good history, but not a great history. In Before the Slave Trade, I address this issue. In 1999, the BBC made a 10-part documentary series called Millennium, 1000 Years of History. In this documentary, they described the West African Empire of Mali as the richest in the 14th century world. Channel 4 television claimed that the great Malian University of Timbuktu had a university population of 25,000 students, a claim also supported by National Geographic. National Geographic also adds that, wait for it, 700,000 old manuscripts from the university heyday are still held by black families and institutions. The oldest dates back to the 13th century AD. The Sudanese Empire of Makuria flourished from the 6th century AD to the 15th century. By the 7th century AD, they were building cathedrals, many surveyed by the archaeologist Dr. Peter Shinney. By the 8th or 9th centuries, according to UNESCO, they had housing complexes with bathrooms and heating systems. One of its cathedrals at Kazir Ibrim was burned in medieval times. Modern archaeologists found at it. Myth number three. Outside of ancient Egypt, Africa has a good history, but not a great history. In Before the Slave Trade, I address this issue. In 1999, the BBC made a 10-part documentary series called Millennium, 1000 Years of History. In this documentary, they described the West African Empire of Mali as the richest in the 14th century world. Channel 4 television claimed that the great Malian University of Timbuktu had a university population of 25,000 students, a claim also supported by National Geographic. National Geographic also adds that, wait for it, 700,000 old manuscripts from the university heyday are still held by black families and institutions. The oldest dates back to the 13th century AD. The Sudanese Empire of Makuria flourished from the 6th century AD to the 15th century. By the 7th century AD, they were building cathedrals, many surveyed by the archaeologist Dr. Peter Shinney. By the 8th or 9th centuries, according to UNESCO, they had housing complexes with bathrooms and heating systems. One of its cathedrals at Kazir Ibrim was burned in medieval times. Modern archaeologists found at its ruins thousands of archived documents that were in eight different languages. Some were in the local languages of Old Nubian, Meroitic, Coptic and Greek Creole. Others were found to be in Greek, Latin, Arabic and Turkish. On two of Makuria's sites, Old Dongola and Hamburg Kol, Archaeologists have found glass windows. Finally, in Ethiopia, there are inscriptions going back as early as the 5th century BC in Proto-Ethiopic with later inscriptions in Greek and also Ethiopic. There are a series of giant obelisks in the city of Aksu. They were constructed between 300 BC and AD 300. The largest one known as the Fallen Obelisk, is the largest in the world, weighing a staggering 520 tons. There are 11 underground churches in the city of Lalibela, widely regarded as the eighth wonder of the world. Built between 1180 and 1220 AD, these buildings were hollowed out of the ground by hammer and chisel. There are 10 standing castles in the city of Gonda, earning the moniker, the Camelot of Africa. Finally, there is the city of Haram, the city of mosques. Ethiopia is a key civilization in the early history of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Several Islamic websites, for example, claim that the Kaaba of Mecca, Islam's holiest shrine, was rebuilt by what they call, quote, 
a shipwrecked Abyssinian in his native style. Abyssinia is, of course, the old name for Ethiopia. If you would like more information, please go to our website www.beforetheslavetrade.com. The book can be purchased from the website. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.